Bonjour. Oui. Monsieur le ministre, Madame la Présidente, mes très chers députés, euh, mes très chers collègues, Monsieur le Professeur, euh, Monsieur le Président, bien sûr, et mes très chers amis. Euh, entrer ici, euh, ou bien être ici à la université, j'ai le sentiment que je suis dans ma famille parce que presque, je vous connais presque tout et ça me fait un grand plaisir. Monsieur le Président m'a demandé de préparer mon petit discours en anglais, donc je vais continuer en anglais si ça ne vous dérange pas. Um, listening to all uh, my predecessors and regarding to you, uh, to the public, I am almost sure that we all here, we know very well what's the best for the maintaining our physical and mental health in a perfect condition for as long as possible. And this common log log knowledge reminds me an interview with a very famous and beautiful American actress, Michelle Pfeiffer. She is around 60 now, I think. And uh, she was asking, uh, how is it possible that already of a certain age she looks so great? Her answer was simple. I try to eat healthy, definitely less than more, do some physical activity daily, train my brain mentally ch with mentally challenging activities daily, and sleep seven, eight hours. And she continued. It's not something difficult. It's not something exceptional, exceptional and not too complicated. Everybody knows it, but only few of us are doing it. Fortunately, all of us here present not only know it, but practice it as well. And also fortunately, my government in the Czech Republic, and that's a credit to be admitted, from 1990s, pay an attention to that part of the population above 60, 65 years old, giving them opportunity of the lifelong learning programs, training courses, which are helped to maintain them in a good physical and mental condition as long as possible. To be frank, it doesn't mean that my politicians in the Czech Republic are so altruistic. But in this case, they are reasonable. They realize that helping to keep almost 11% of the Czech population healthy saves definitely cost of the national budget. And on the side of our seniors, this effort of the Czech government has a very positive echo. Last year, they were 60,000 who were keen to learn a new skill, adopt a new hobby, or engage in a formal education. So, in my country, lifelong learn learning and the education of seniors at higher education institution is covered in the Czech law and is regulated by the Act on Higher Education. Both Lifelong learning courses and the education of seniors are either paid or free of charge. Public higher education institutions can use public contributions for funding them. Part of these public contributions covers the cost of the education at the University of the Third Age, as well as the cost associated with the preparation and development of new programs including the cost of material and technical support or ensuring teaching aids. The amount of the contributions depends on the size of the study group and type of education, whether it is in the form of virtual teaching or lecturing, and if classrooms equipped by IT equipment or laboratories are needed. In programs of the universities of the third age, we are talking about 22 universities in the Czech Republic. The students are studying from the economics, agronomy, forest landscaping, engineering, 
philosophy, languages, culture, psy psychology, law, education, etc. What's important to know, that study at these universities is not a substitute for comprehensive university education. Graduates receive a certificate of completion, completion not an academic degree. That means participants do not have the legal status of a student. However, during their study, they may use facilities within the university grounds, such as libraries, computers, laboratories, mm. swimming pool, whatever. The general requirement for admission to the universities of the third age is an application for age over 50 years and secondary education completed by a school leaving examination. The lecture series are designed generally for two years, it means four semesters, and each semester consists of 10 to 12 lectures. <coughs> Teaching is usually supplemented with educational excursions or workshops. The completed study is officially ended in the university's auditorium where students receive certificates. So, to conclude my little speech, to study in every age is enriching. To study in senior age definitely improve the quality of life, extend mental and also physical activities, provide intergeneration dialogue, and very often help find a new confidence, a meaning and meaning of life. Thank you very much for your attention.